today we will learn about the kingdom plantae and the subclasses of this kingdom thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta let us first discuss the kingdom plantae kingdom plantae consists of all autotrophs which perform photosynthesis with the help of chlorophyll and can make their own food all plants are members of plantae kingdom they are all multicellular organisms which are formed from eukaryotic cells that is they have well defined nuclei in cells and membrane bound organelles they contain cell wall which are mainly made up of cellulose different functions in their body are performed by tissues due to the presence of chlorophyll most organisms in this class are autotrophic but some of these organisms are also heterotrophs some of these organisms produce offspring from sexual reproduction and some from asexual reproduction let us now understand the classification of kingdom plantae the first level of classification is based on whether the major body parts of the plant are fully developed or differentiated plants whose bodies are without differentiation are placed in the subclass thallophyta the next level is made on the basis whether there are specific tissues for the transport of water and other substances in the body of the plants plants that do not have specific tissues for conduction in their body are placed in the subclass bryophyta plants that have tissues for conduction are classified based on their ability to hold seed seedless plants are placed in the subclass pteridophyta then we classify seed producing plants on the basis of whether the seed is inside or outside the fruit plants whose seeds grow outside of the fruit that is if seeds are in open state then such plants are called gymnosperms and those plants whose seeds grow inside the fruit that is the seeds are in closed state are called angiosperms angiosperms can be classified into monocots and dicots based on the number of cotyledons among them thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta the plants in these three groups have very inconspicuous or hidden sex organs and they lack the ability to produce seeds so they are called cryptogams but in gymnosperms and angiosperms the reproductive organs are fully developed and differentiated they produce seeds through sexual reproduction hence these groups are called phanerogam the seeds consist of embryo along with the stored food when the embryo develops into a new organism it gets nutrition from the stored food let's talk about thallophyta in detail plants like eulothrix alva calidophora spirogyra cara etc are included in the class thallophyta their size also varies some organisms such as climodominus are unicellular which requires a microscope to view them whereas some organisms such as kelp are very large differentiation is not found in the body organization of these plants that is parts like roots stem leaf are not developed in them all the plants in this group are commonly called algae 
These are all aquatic plants. They can do photosynthesis because of presence of chlorophyll and thus can make their own food. That is, they are autotrophic. Some algae are very small and they form layers on the surface of water. These are called phytoplankton. Apart from water, thallophytes are also found in moist stones, soil and wood. Some of these plants, such as blue-green algae, form permanent interrelationship with certain species of fungi that gives various benefits to both. We call this relationship symbiosis. Thallophytes have various methods of reproduction. In Spirogyra, asexual reproduction occurs by fragmentation. The asexual reproduction in Chlamydomonas results from the origin of various spores called zoospores. In Spirogyra, Cara, etc., sexual reproduction occurs by fertilization of gametes. Now, let's discuss Bryophyta. In this class, liverworts such as Marxia and moss such as Funaria are included. They are often found in moist and shady areas of hills. Bryophytes are also called amphibians of kingdom plantae because plants of this class live on land but for sexual reproduction they depend on water. Their body do not have tissues for conduction of water and other substances from one part to other part. They absorb water and nutrients from the surface and the material is carried from cell to cell. Their body is like thallus and is straight. They are attached to substratum by unicellular and multicellular rhizoids. They do not have developed structures like roots, stem and leaves. But they have similar structures so their bodies are differentiated than thallophyta. In these, sexual organs are multicellular. The male sex organ is called anthridium and the female sex organ is called archegonium. From anthridia, male gamete, antherozoid is developed which is released on water. Here, its fertilization occurs with the female gamete egg and the zygote is formed. It is developed into sporophyte. Some of its cells are converted into spores. It develops and produces new organisms. Now, let's understand Pteridophyta. Plants of the type Marsilia, Fern, etc. are included in Pteridophyta. This class of plant kingdom consists of all those plants whose body develops completely into roots, stems and leaves. That means their body is completely differentiated. They have specific tissues for the transport of water and other necessary substances from one part of the body to another. We call such tissues as conducting tissues. Of them, xylem tissue transports water while phloem tissue transports food and other substances from one part of the plant to another. They neither have flowers nor they bear seeds. The gametophytes have male and female reproductive parts which are called anthridium and archegonium respectively. Antherozoids are released from the antheridium and reach the mouth of archegonium through water. The egg present in archegonium fuses with the male gamete to produce zygote which develops into a new individual. So today we learned about Kingdom Plantae and subclasses of this kingdom, Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta.